Hey everybody, back with another video. Um, I had picked this up, this DC power supply. It's an older ProTech. I don't know anything about that manufacturer. Um, 3003, which should be 30 volts at 3 amps. Um, I got this for free from a fellow arcade collector. And um, we didn't know if it worked or not. So anyway, what I was going to do is um, power it on. And you can see it has a digital, um, you know, LED or LCD, whatever, um, display for the voltage and for amps. Our lights are on, so that's good. It looks like my amp adjustment is working because I see the light go off. Um, I don't know if that means anything, actually. But if I adjust my coarse voltage or my fine grain voltage... I cannot change the voltage at all. So my voltage adjustment, does, did something happen? <clears throat> Doesn't seem to have any impact at all. Um, I figured I would go ahead and put on my multimeter. You guys can see this okay. Maybe I'll just do it like that. And we'll put my negative in there and my positive. And we have a 48 volt, so it's supposed to be limited at 30, 30 volts, so there's definitely something wrong with some of the circuitry in here, because um, it's outputting 48 volts instead of um, 30 volts, and I cannot adjust it at all, as you can see there. So what we're going to do in this video is um, try to fix it. I mean, this is a pretty cheap meter. I mean, you can probably get one used for like 50 bucks on eBay, maybe shipped, maybe a little bit more. Um, but a lot of them I, that I was looking at are actually broken. So probably worth trying to fix. I mean, it's only three amps, but it can adjust to 30 volts. So that's a nice, you know, 15 or 22 volt um, type of power supply that you could hook onto. Um, I've been wanting to add a DC power supply to my bench and um, instead of buying one, might as well get this one working. So, All right, real All right. quick on the back, it has a standard uh, 2N3055 power transistor. Um, I'll probably go ahead and pull that and test it. I don't think that's the problem, but um, I definitely see 48 volts at the co um, collector, which is the case, I think, right? Let me see. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, the collector is, is the case itself. I mean, then you have the base and emitter. So it could, I don't know, it could be as simple as that. I'm not an electrical engineer or anything, but, um, I'm going to take it apart and clean it up anyway. To get it apart, you basically have to take off these screws on the top, these screws on the side, on both sides, I think, right there. Um, and I'm going to get that in the evapor rust. I'm probably going to clean this thing up a little bit because it looks a little rusted at the bottom as well. So let me um, take this thing apart and I'm actually probably right. explain this very well because um, I'm not that knowledgeable with this stuff. But it looks like here's your, you know, LCD display board and then here's your voltage adjustment board. I would s suspect that the problem is probably not there in that it's somewhere back on this board here we got some transistors some caps we're getting dc voltage so i'm assuming that the you know the bridge rectifier and stuff is good um but we can we can test that too just in case um and then there's a couple trans there's the 2n3055 there but there's also another transistor on another heat sink there so um you know testing those and pulling some of this stuff out probably makes sense testing the caps or maybe recapping that i just doubt that the problem is on this board i'm gonna you know verify this side first um, and see and then also try to get this all out of here so i can clean it up it may be um de-rusted it's it, even if i can it's not a big deal it's not that bad all right i got everything taken apart um it actually wasn't too hard i mean there's i took some pictures so i could figure out how to put it back together but um 
it looks like this board, this power board, is directly soldered onto the transformer. Um, if you can see right here. So it should be able to desolder and get that board off just to make it easier for me to probably recap it um, and check the caps because obviously I can't check the caps like that. So I will desolder this board um, and then also clean this up and probably use some evaporust or something. So it's actually not too bad. Um, I might clean this up a little bit too. There's a little bit of rust up there. But I don't want to mess with this board too much because I know that the display is working. So probably leave that alone for the most part. Alright, so let me clean this thing up. It's going to take me a little bit. And, and then uh, I'll start troubleshooting and trying to figure out what's wrong. Alright, so I was able to get everything apart. Um, and I was cleaning up the underside of this. This board kind of goes... How's it go? Kind of like like that right and as the other thing I was going to show is that both of these transistors are 2N3055 uh, so it's got two of them and they just go on the heat sinks like that but as I was looking at this and I did have to kind of wiggle this board a little bit but I don't think I did this if I show this hopefully you can see that right there Right on the edge there, PCB is cracked. Now, it's possible that I did this and this is unrelated, but it just looks like it's been there for a while, right? I mean, that doesn't look like fresh, really. But it's definitely, um, the, the trace is definitely messed up. Let me see if I can show real quick. Supposed to go from this red here to that side of the trace. I'm good, but if I come over here, nothing. And that's definitely going to the other board, but nothing over here. That's going to the board. Um, I don't have the schematics. I don't know exactly what voltage that is, but it's definitely going to the the uh, board with the uh, variable adjustments on it. So I'm going to have to fix that trace. I'm going to clean up this front side, and I'll still um, measure the caps and stuff. But I'm hoping that that might have been our problem right there. So, All right, so I was able to fix that up real quick. Just used a uh, folded over a some capacitor legs scraped out scraped off the um, solder mask type thing it's not great but what do you mean it's not great I guess I mean it's not gonna be great it's broken <laughs> so but it, obviously it works now so anyway I went ahead and took um, one of these apart one of the 33055s and let's see is this my new one yeah this is the old one over here Zoom in just a little bit. And it's an MPN transistor and it's shorted. Um, as you can see, base, base to emitter, base to collector, and then if I go collector to emitter, this obviously is bad. <laughs> I mean, this is what it should look like. Whoops, dang it. I wonder if this is my was my only problem to begin with, but this is what a good one looks like. So, anyway, um, these I I got this from, gosh, where did I get this from? Jamico or something? Um, a package of these. I have better ones that I'm I put in uh, Tari AR2s, but I've had these just as major brands. So who knows? I mean, hopefully. These are legit. NJS, no idea. But I'm going to put it in these because um, I need to use these somehow, and I'm definitely not putting these on my AR. So, all right. And the other thing is, look how little, I mean, that maybe that's enough heat sink, uh, neat, enough um, paste, thermal paste, but I don't know. I mean, 
I like putting a little bit more thermal paste than that on there. So I will probably put a little bit more, but maybe that's all you need. I'm not sure, but definitely going to replace that transistor and test this other one as well. Come right back and test that. Okay, so I got everything back assembled. One of the things is you can see how close the collector of this transistor is to touching the collector of that transistor. Now, I, I think it's okay, but those things are definitely tight in there, if you can see that. Um, the other thing is, I did not, I'm not in love with the way this main filter cap, this 3300 63 volt cap, um, is testing when I put it on my meter. I'll show you in a second. And then I, I took it off. I've already cleaned it up a little bit, but you can see there's some corrosion underneath of it. Now, this is probably just like regular corrosion. I started to clean up that one because I don't have my Dremel, so I had to scrape it off. But there, the pads are probably okay on the underside, and the through holes are probably okay, but definitely want to clean that up. And I'm don't have one of these 3300 caps so I'll probably put it back in but let me let me actually show put this on the tripod and test it real quick I'm just going to test it with my DSR ESR meter a little bit better 0.25 I mean it should be like really low I mean like point zero something really I might get out my other ESR meter just to the other ones tested okay I, it's good enough that I'm gonna put it back in but honestly I wish I had the caps on hand because I would just go ahead and replace it but I mean it looks it looks okay we won't know until we did measure like ripple voltage and stuff which I, I don't know if I'm gonna do or not but yeah there's there's my other meter right there with the cap hooked up to it point around 0.25 or close to it I mean basically almost the same reading that we were getting and that's probably not good enough for a 3300 cap so let me see what I can do about that all right well here's a 3300 cap a 35 volt axial and it's measuring basically about the same so I'm going to go ahead and keep the caps the same. I'm just cleaning up the post and I'm going to clean up that um, little bit of the corrosion that was underneath of it. So, All right. all right, I have everything, well, not all the way back together because I don't know if it's fixed or not, but I think I have everything connected right. It's time to power it on. I did t end up testing, I've had to pull this two legs out of this bridge rectifier and I tested that and that tested good. I ended up not replacing any of the caps. They all they all tested fine. Um, obviously, I could replace this. It looks like the ground, the earth ground one, has uh, been broken off, or maybe it was never there. I don't know. You don't really need it anyway. But so I think everything's connected right. All right, cross your fingers here. Let's put, plug this thing in. All right, I wasn't recording. I already powered it on, but so the suspense is gone, but it works. 15.9 volts. Let me turn everything counterclockwise on the voltage adjustment. Get zero volts. I'll do some further testing on this. And then this is the course adjustment here. Oh, you can tell that it goes... That's probably why two, there's a relay, so it probably kicks in the other uh, 3055 if you listen to it. Right about 15 volts. There's a relay that clicks on to do something. Thirty-one volts. So I might need to adjust it because that's probably not thirty-one volts. And that's as far as it goes. So let's let's go down to ten. And see how much our fine grain. 
Testament gets us. Interesting. At least a couple volts at 10 volts. Let's see what it does at, let's go to 20. One point one three volts. So it's probably because no no amps are being pulled. So let me come back um, with the, my volt meat digital digital voltmeter, my multimeter. But I did clean it up really good. I mean, um, looks pretty good. You know, I de-rusted everything, cleaned it out. Um, there's definitely some. This is one of the side panels where you can tell that there's still some rust right underneath the paint but I'll put that at the top I might eventually paint that I don't know we'll see it's not that big of a deal I wasn't trying to restore the thing or anything just clean it up <clears throat> so two three zero five five um, transistors and whatever happened to the board maybe I did that I don't know but I fixed that trace and no, didn't replace any of the capacitors or anything. Not pretty, for free, and a little bit of work. You know, not a big, not, um, not a bad deal. Alright, so, I'm not going to do any adjustments or anything, but it is pretty close. I mean, I'm reading 10 volts here, 10.1 volts on my... EV blog meter which has a little bit of a low battery um, and it's adjusting fine etc so I'm assuming when I turn this counterclockwise because this is putting a little bit of a load very little it went to red there I could hook up a resistor um, to see you know do a calculation of how many amps it's going to be I, yeah, maybe I'll do that, but I'm not going to really screw with it to adjust it. Damn thing's working. It's good enough for me. Um, I'm just going to put it back together. What else can I do? Oh, measure um, ripple voltage, at least on the DC line here. And we have uh, 0 0.003 volts AC. That's pretty low. Wow, that's weird. As as the voltage gets higher, the ripple voltage gets is lower. I don't know, somebody know. There we go. Now that that makes sense. Yeah, as your voltage increases and your load, you probably get more ripple voltage. But it's 0 0.03, um, which is pretty low. So I'm not worried about the caps on this thing. Yeah, I'm not worried about it at all. All right. Um, let's see what else. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll put, I'm going to put it back together. That's okay, so I have a 2 uh, ohm resistor here. Um, and at 5 volts, that should be um, 2.5 amps. Um, never done this before, so we'll find out, I guess, huh? Oh, you can see I got it on. all back together and everything. That's, you know, used, but whatever. Alright, let's go to... See if it'll adjust with load. Okay, because this only goes to 3 amps, actually, so... Definitely seems to be working. Two point 
2.37 amps is what it says. Now it should be 2.5 amps, obviously. Um, to see how close that is, I'd have to put my meter on amps and put it in line and stuff. But it definitely seems to be working. Let me put a lower. Alright, so I switched it up. I put my meter in line, um, put it on amps. I have a 5 ohm um, 100 watt resistor, um, which is more than enough to for the heat and stuff. 5 volts, 0.93 amps, and my meter says 0.95. So it's pretty darn close. Now if I go to... Let's go to 20 volts. Uh, that's uh, that's too much. That'd be 4 amps. So we have to go to... I'm just looking at Ohm's, my Ohm's Law of Calculator right there. So just playing with that. Um, so let's go to 10 volts should be around 2 amps, right? <clears throat> yeah. So let's go... There we go. That's about two amps. And I'm sure it'll, the red light will come on if I... There we go. And then my voltage starts going down. It should be about... Am I on? Uh, I need to be on amps. That's uh, microamps. Duh. All right. I don't know what was going on with my meter, but maybe it's the resistance. That pot. These pots might need to be cleaned. I don't know. But it was it flakes out my meter, but 1.73 volts um, amps. I mean amps on my meter. 1.7 there. Nine volts, five ohm resistor. By the way, this thing is getting super hot. It's a hundred watt resistor, but probably doing about 50, 40 watts on it. So I wouldn't recommend it. You know, using anything when you're doing experiments like this. I I don't know really. I'm just playing around, so learning myself. But you definitely want to make sure you have a high enough wattage resistor. These things have come in handy. They're like um, 100 watts, and I can do 2 ohms, 1 ohm, 5 ohm, and I have 10 ohms too. So, And then you can wire them in par series and parallel and stuff like that um, to generate different loads and stuff. But this seems like it's working pretty good. If I crank... Crank uh, the max, almost the max amps. Let's see how far we can go. You can hear it's getting something clicked on from a relay standpoint, and you can hear it humming. Turn that off. Yeah, see, I don't know why my, my meter goes weird. Should be reading three, almost three amps. Wonder if it's because the battery's low or what's going on. Hmm. Wacky. I think that's it for this video, though. Um, got it fixed up. It's working good enough, up to 3 amps and uh, 30 volts probably, so, and I can feel that thing. And I'm doing it on <laughs> some cardboard, so probably not the safest thing to do. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, got a DC power supply. 
and we'll add that to the bench up here somewhere. Cool. Bye.